Talk. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? <laughs> oh, come on. I know you can hear me. <laughs> That's the Geico Camel reminding us what day of the week it is. This is Hump Day. We are over the hump. And heading on the downslope for this week and a four-day week it is for a lot of us. So great to have you uh, in the uh, conversation. Now, um, I want to turn our attention. I want to start right off the bat with some uh, sound bites from what has uh, taken or what is taking place with uh, Syria and this whole proposal to go in there. Now, apparently there's going to be a vote on the Syria resolution that's coming out of the Senate. And it's interesting to me, uh, right now there is only, uh, and this is this is kind of a fluid situation, so some of this may have changed since I last read a story on this topic because it's a pretty fast-moving landscape. I guess Kerry and uh, Dempsey and uh, whoever the other guy is. Uh, oh, yeah, Chuck Hagel are testifying before a House committee uh, as we speak. But apparently the Senate resolution, very open-ended. Uh, it has a number of loopholes that would allow President Obama far more latitude, I think, than most of us would be comfortable with. It does limit him to 60 days, but lets him expand that to 90 if that's what he chooses. And it prohibits boots on the ground. Now, Bob Corker is the only Republican on that committee that was at, at all for that proposal, and he's been waffling on it this morning. So there may be a vote on that. Now, because it's in the Senate, then the Democrats are going to have a majority on that committee. If all the Democrats stick together, then that resolution will likely pass out of the Senate. But I believe it will die a rapid and painful death when it gets over to the House. And John McCain, get this, John McCain is against this thing because it doesn't give President Obama enough power. I mean, John McCain is a warbird. He's not a wacko bird. That's Ted Cruz and Rand Paul. Rand Paul is threatening to filibuster this thing, and I will tell you that will be the most popular filibuster going. The American people are just not uh, for this thing. Let me just grab. Let me just grab latest information on polling data. This is from a couple of polls. Pew Research, only 32% of the American people believe that President Obama has explained clearly why the U.S. should launch military strikes against Syria. This is from Pew Research. A Washington Post-ABC News poll, which was also released yesterday, found that just 36% of Americans support military strikes in Syria, while 59% oppose action. Just 27% of adults support the U.S. and allies supplying weapons to the Syrian rebels, and 70% of us are opposed. 48 to 29% we oppose conducting military strikes. That's according to the Pew Survey. Uh, Pew Survey. So it's Washington Post, ABC News, or whether it's Pew Research, the American people are overwhelmingly opposed to striking Syria, to bombing Syria. Less than a third of the American people believe that Obama has made his case that we ought to go in there. And uh, only 36 percent, uh, according to ABC Post or Washington Post, ABC support military strikes. So that's just about a third, 59 percent opposed. So a strong majority opposed going in there. Uh, and only 27 percent want us to supply weapons to the Syrian rebels with 70 percent opposed to that. This is what John McCain wants. I mean, John McCain, Lindsey Graham, I mean, somebody called them, Lindsey Graham, John McCain, and Barack Obama, the three stooges today. I mean, I have no idea where John McCain is coming from on this. He wants to arm the rebels. The rebels are Al-Qaeda. The rebels are Muslim Brotherhood. The radicals, or the, the, the rebels are radical Islamists. And John McCain wants to put American weapons in their hands. I mean, this is stupendously stupid. This is stupid beyond anything that you can imagine. And yet John McCain, Lindsey Graham, 
are all down with this program. But the American people are smart enough to recognize this is just absolute sheer folly. And just 33% of the American people think that airstrikes are li- likely to be effective. In other words, the American people realize, look, this isn't even going to work. Only one-third of us think this would do any good at all. And remember, President Obama said, look, we don't want regime change here. We don't want to take Assad out of power. We just kind of want to uh, uh, send a missile across his bow. We want to kind of try to scare him straight or whatever. Well, he's laughing at us. I mean, <laughs> Assad is laughing at us. His 11-year-old son is posting stuff on his Facebook, ridiculing Barack Obama. We have literally become the laughing stock of the entire world because we have a president that literally, absolutely, totally has no idea what he is doing. And you have Republicans like John McCain and Lindsey Graham that are supporting the very worst ideas that President Obama has. And you've probably seen the picture of John McCain playing poker. He's playing poker on his iPhone in the middle of that hearing yesterday about whether or not we're supposed to go to war in Syria. What is John McCain doing? He's playing games on his iPhone. So I guess when the tough get going, when when the going gets tough, President Obama goes downstairs and plays uh, spades, and John McCain plays poker uh, on his iPhone. But the American people, uh, they aren't being fooled at all about the prospect of any kind of good outcome in the series. Let's play a couple of sound bites. This is, um, let's, let's start with clip two, Rob. Actually, this is President Obama a year ago because there's a lot of conversation now today about this red line business. And we'll play the sound bite today where Obama says, I didn't draw a red line. I didn't say anything about a red line. What are you talking about? That, that red line business, that doesn't come from me. That's not from me. That's not my doing. Well, here is President Obama a year ago, this is President Obama, words out of his own lips on this whole business about a red line. We have been very clear to the Assad regime, but also to other players on the ground that a red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Uh, that would change my calculus. That would change my equation. So that's a red line. We see uh, chemical weapons moving around. That's going to change my equation. That would be the red line. So you heard him say it with words that came from his own lips that there was a red line. I've got a story in here. Let me see if I can find it. I think it's toward the bottom of the stack. And I did not get there through the bottom of my stack and preparing before I came across the uh, street. So here it is. This is a member of his own staff, a White House official. This is a background call in April of 2013. So this goes back now, what, what is, uh, this is September, this will go back about five months. This is a White House official. You just heard President Obama a year ago saying, yeah, red line, red line, chemical weapons moving around. That's a red line going to change my calculus. Here is the White House official. We go on to reaffirm that the president, the president, the president, has set a clear red line as it relates to the United States that the use of chemical weapons is a red line that is not acceptable to us. It is absolutely the case, again, this is quoting the White House official, it is absolutely the case that the president's red line is the use of chemical weapons. And then here is another paragraph from that same call. The people in Syria and the Assad regime should know that the president means what he says when he set that red line. And keep in mind, he is the one who laid down that marker. He's the one who directed that we provide this information to the public, and he's the one who directed that we do everything we can to further investigate this information. So President Obama said it's a red line. His White House official follows up in April of 2013. Never forget that President Obama is the one that set the red line. He declared it. He told us to get this information out. He wanted to make it clear to Assad there's a red line. You can't cross it with impunity. Now, this is President Obama today, clip number one. He's over in Sweden, appearing, I think, with the prime minister of Sweden or whatever whatever they call the guy over there. And listen to him now. And what he says about where this whole red line business comes from, he says, I didn't have anything to do with it. I have nothing to do with the red line. Those words never came from my list. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's listen. First of all, I didn't set a red line. 
Yikes. The world set a red line. The world set a red line when governments representing 98% of the world's population said uh, the use of chemical weapons are abhorrent and passed a treaty forbidding their use even when countries are engaged in war. Congress set a red line when it ratified that treaty. Congress set a red line uh, when it indicated that uh, in a uh, piece of uh, legislation titled the Syria Accountability Act that uh, some of the horrendous things that are happening on the ground there uh, need to be answered for. Uh, and so when I said in a press conference that my calculus about what's happening in Syria would be altered by the use of chemical weapons, which the overwhelming uh, consensus of humanity says is wrong. Um, that wasn't something I just kind of made up. I didn't pluck it out of thin air. Uh, there's a reason for it. So President Obama a year ago says there's a red line. I've set a red line. We see chemical weapons moving about in Syria. That's going to change my calculation. You can't cross that red line. There's going to be repercussions if you do. White House officials saying, yeah, that red line was set by the president. He said it. He did it. Never forget. He's the one that set the red line. Now today, President Obama, I didn't set a red line. That's the first words out of his mouth. I didn't set a red line. I mean, it's amazing to me. It's like President Obama just thinks that magically these words that he has spoken in the past, that he can, that they just disappear. They've just vanished into thin air. They're, they're no longer operable. They're no longer operative. They no longer count. They ought to be just dismissed. And everybody ought to just forget that he ever said them. And, and, and he takes offense. That there's umbrage. I mean, he was, he was fairly intense in those comments there, he resented the fact that he was being reminded of words that he himself said. And now you notice what he's doing. He's trying to shift the blame for this now all off on the Congress. I think he realizes that he got himself in a, in, in a world of hurt here, got himself in a world of hurt, got himself all cobbed up, all jammed up by making up foreign policy kind of on the fly. Now he's trying to find somebody to pin this debacle on, and so he's picked Congress. Congress is the one to set the red line. Congress has got to step up to the plate. Don't blame me. Blame Congress. Focal Point AFR Talk.